Hi, and welcome back to this Jez versus AI deathmatch series. Uh, in this vid, I talk once more to Jess from Turn 2 with another tricky question to see who can provide the best answer, me or the weight of human endeavor chucked into a Kenwood mixer and pumped out into a confusing word salad. Let's dive straight in. Why do standard tests often appear normal in patients with debilitating long COVID symptoms? Okay, so if, if you've got long COVID, this is an experience that you will have had, which is that you go to the doctor, you, you go, oh, let's have a look at your blood. So they do a full set of blood tests and they come back and say, yeah, it's all fine. Now, had you had the same suite of blood tests a month before you got COVID in the first place, you would find they're not all the same. So th there are a number of things that we are seeing that are changing when people have long COVID, but they're not changing to a point where it flags on the doctor's system and goes, oh, this is this is bad or this could cause serious disease. Because in their understanding of what these markers are, they don't mean that. But so the things we are seeing that change in long COVID, cholesterol levels jump up significantly, despite no other changes to diet or anything else. And in fact, with long COVID, a lot of people tend, to, if they're doing a low histamine diet, often <laughs> end up eating healthier than they did beforehand, but still the cholesterol goes up. Glucose control. So blood sugar goes up. So people who were fine before become pre-diabetic. People who are pre-diabetic before become diabetic. But again, so if your blood glucose was completely fine under control before, now you go in, the doctor goes, yeah, it's a little bit high, but it's fine. It doesn't trigger their standard guideline for this is something we need to do about. Mm -hmm. They will just say it's fine. So cholesterol, glucose, and cortisol. So cortisol levels, if you have those checked, you'll often find that those cortisol levels are surprisingly low, but again, not to a degree that's going to make the doctor say, oh my God, we have to do something about this. Those are just three examples of some of the things which are funky in long haulers' blood results, but they are simply side effects of what's going wrong. They aren't the problem. You see what I mean? This whole systemic problem that's going on inside our bodies knocks a few other things out of whack via other compensatory mechanisms and so that's what those three things in particular are seeing now i did a, an interview with dr ben sinclair recently he also spoke about all the things he's seen um with blood results which are let's say unusual but in themselves not necessarily something to go after and treat it's not you know it's not the sort of thing where oh my god you're blood result X is completely out, therefore have this drug that's designed to specifically do that. You know, we're not, and we're seeing blood pressure going up as well. That's another thing that we're seeing. And again, this is probably part of the vascular dysfunction, but not to a point where the blood pressure is going up so high that, that again, people need hypertensive drugs, you know. And then there's the other side of it, which is the people who have POTS, often their blood pressure can go too low. So it's, again, it's not universal. Mm. People's nervous systems are working differently. People are having different problems, different pathologies at play, and it's a very complex picture. So the answer is your blood results probably aren't the same as they were over time before you had long COVID, but in themselves, we're simply not looking for the right things right now because we don't yeah. understand. It's such a new condition. We don't understand what it is we need to look for and the sorts of things where the problems are aren't coming up in the tests we're doing. So, you know, the mitochondrial abnormalities, no, those aren't going to come up in a standard blood test. The metabolic abnormalities aren't going to come up in a standard blood test. The, vas the vascular abnormalities aren't going to come up in a standard. Mm -hmm. So when I say vascular abnormalities, microclots, right? So one of the things that got reported uh, sort of two or three years ago was even the shape of the red blood cells is they're a bit deformed. They're not quite right. They're not carrying the oxygen in the right way. Um, but again, that's not the sort of thing that we're looking at in a standard blood test. So all of these mm -hmm. things are off. We're just not looking at the right things yet because we don't understand the pathology. Jump ahead 50 years in time and we'll have probably expanded the sort of things we look for in a blood test. And on the blood test, I'll go, oh yes, look, you've got long COVID. But 50 years ago, we, there's all sorts of conditions now we'll find in a blood test that we wouldn't have found then. And it's yeah. just, we haven't worked out what this is yet. We don't know what to test for. We don't know what to look for. So that's my answer. Hope it isn't 50 years. <laughs> it, it probably is before it's a standard GP test, but sure, yeah. Sure. yeah. And there's a lot of papers. I've seen a bunch of papers always coming through with these biomarkers, but you know, I don't want to lead you down a back rabbit hole. Yeah. Um, I sort of seeing them coming through. So, oh, they're, they're, uh, they're, but they're just... really obscure. The biomarkers that we're finding are really obscure and they're not the sorts of yeah, things yeah, yet yeah. that 
again, a while, again, we haven't replicated them in enough other trials and they're not easy enough to test for that your doctor's going to go, oh, here you go. That hasn't found its way to the of nice course. guidelines yet. If you're in the UK, the of nice course. guidelines are what of course. Of course. sort of GPs run yeah. off. Yeah, but you, yeah, I wonder if there's clinical, clinical evidence you could gather over time to warrant some of those extra tests. You know, that would be the hope, right? Pri privately, um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> get your, <po> get <laughs> not, your hand in your pockets. <laughs> yeah. That's all right. That's all right. Yeah. Okay, so I did a deep research pro um, on this one. So I don't know if you want to have a quick look. So ChatGPT has done a good job here. And it's essentially validating the question by saying, yes, this is a real thing. Standard tests typically return normal results or probably I would add inverted commas around the normal there. Um, and it's because long COVID often involves micro level and functional abnormalities invisible to common tests. Yes. Routine exams mainly detect large scale organ damage or classic disease markers, but many long COVID pathologies like the capillary, cellular or systemic regulation level eluding conventional diagnostics. Yeah, that's I mean, that, uh, that's exactly what I think. And then here, I think we're just going into some more depth talking about the evidence for microvascular clotting, uh, dysautonomia um cellular and metabolic dysfunctions yeah other emerging mechanisms so pretty good answer this and pretty much exactly what i said i think yes um, i did put this yeah. into the turn to tool again like i don't let me see if i can find it um yeah one thing i mentioned before one thing our tool does which again I'm, i mean i'm just more of a curious person is we don't try, we actually just do vector embedding, like we match concepts across a data set. So I guess what I'm, the, the beauty of AI, if people were to think about it, is it's just historically we haven't been able to connect the dots always between concepts unless you're you <laughs> or, you know, whatever mm. academic you are. So one thing we try to do is just vector embed, if that makes sense, match these concepts across content. So it's going to be variable, the answers. Um, but let's have a look because I'm imagining. Well, have a look at the basics. You know. What happens if you go to okay, the basics? Yeah, I, the basics should just give you a very, uh, we try and do just a simple answer for those who want the basics. Yeah. Um, Why well, standard tests appear normal? Focus on gross abnormalities. Yes. Lack of specific biomarker. Yeah, we haven't worked out what we're looking for yet. Uh, dynamic, episodic nature. Good point. Yeah, it changes. It's complex. Uh, and limitations of current tests and thresholds, averages. Yes. Um, and again, we're not using the advanced images um or, or and our autonomic nervous system testing is still very you know what for me just a complete sideways thing here i read a news article recently about some guy who's done a study going i've worked out why we yawn and i've got this study and it's shown that the oxygen level or the something whatever it is changes by 0 0.2 of a 0 0.2 blah, blah, blah. And so this is why we yawn. And so this is still being reported on and people are still doing this research. And to me, it's quite obvious that yawning is just part of nervous system regulation. And it's why it's completely universal across mammals, pretty much. I mean, having said that, I don't know if dolphins yawn, but, you know, <laughs> but it's a, it's a social thing, as well as it being an individual thing, because it's about basically activating the parasympathetic nervous system by yawning you're putting pressure on the vagus nerve that you know it's when we have things like that which to me are quite clear and obvious and again maybe this is maybe i'm just totally done in kruger on this right i don't know but but to me that's clear and obvious that shows how little we understand the autonomic nervous system fundamentally so when you have severe dysautonomia it's it's not surprising that we don't yet have the tests <laughs> to be able apart from so what happens now if you think you're dysautonomic do a nasa lean test all right you've got to stand funny against a wall for 10 minutes and repeatedly check your blood pressure we don't have a good way of doing this yet and that seems potty to me when you consider how fundamental the nervous system is to the regulation of just about everything else anyway sideways rant there but i'm just picking up on one of the points it mentioned <laughs> Here we go. So here's some research. I don't, again, <laughs> autonomic yeah. dysfunction. You yeah. mentioned that. Um, I don't know if there's anything new in here, but I think if we scroll down to the experts, I think <laughs> you're in hinges. Minor abnormalities with failure to detect deeper issues like mitochondrial dysfunction or microclots. He's just advanced research tests and need for better diagnostics. Yeah. Where did it pick that up from, if I ask? Does it yeah, say well, it where? I mean, you know, it should have been from your channel. Here we go. Yes. It's from a live yeah. Q&A I did. Yeah. Really interesting that. And, and again, obviously, I agree with myself there. 
Um, but, <laughs> so the tour, the tour must be good. Yeah, and, and actually, let's look at what Danny says above. Professor Danny Altman emphasizes the need for advanced diagnostics to identify immune dysregulation and persistent viral activity. Routine tests often fail to capture these abnormalities, leading to diagnostic challenges. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, and we're actually, as I said, we're probably going to expand these as well, by the way. People with using our product give us feedback because it's very hard to summarize expert opinions because there's so much people say. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we're just, we're just playing with that. It's like, how do we really do justice to the rich content that's being shared? So I hope you found that interesting. Turn2 really is a fantastic platform that is developing really fast. Uh, I had been using Claude AI for all my long COVID questions, but now I go straight to Turn8 and it is so much better. Um, I find the specific trawls it does for patient voices as well as expert voices and the places it looks for those like videos and podcasts is something that the big boys like ChatGPT and Claude are hopeless at. So if you want to take a look at the platform yourself, then there's a link in the description which will take you to the same place as this QR code. There's a free trial to see if you get on with it, and if you do decide to subsequently sign up, then using uh, this link, the QR code, or the code JEZ10, will give you 10% off. Uh, it's normally $9 a month, so that's already less than half the price of ChatGPT, for example. So that's it for the moment, but still to come is another chat with Emily Kate Stevens from The Visible Podcast. The last one went down incredibly well, so if you've not seen it yet, perhaps take a look. There's a link up here and in the description. Look after yourselves, until next time.